Welcome to my walking tour of decks 11 and above on the Carnival of Venezia. This is the last of my walking tour series from the maiden voyage of this beautiful ship. And I think this is my best one yet. It's so interesting to see what Carnival has done with decks 11 and above. There's a lot of little hidden nooks and crannies, places to lay out in the sun, places to hide with a quiet little book. And also there's the fun zone, the splash zone for the kids. There's three water slides, there's a ropes course, there's an arcade, uh, just lots of wonderful things to do for the family as well. So um, we're gonna get started without too much further ado. Um, watch till the end if you'd like to know what additional content I brought back to you from the Carnival of Venezia. We've got lots coming up, including my full review of the ship. So uh, let's get started. Here we go with my walking tour of deck 11, 12 and above on the Carnival of Venezia. Okay, so we are at the corner of the Lido deck going up from 10 to deck 11, which overlooks the Lido. There are stairs on both sides of the Lido deck. Over here, we are by the Rococo bar. I'm looking down at the Lido, and there are also stairs just like this over by Java Blue. Unlike a lot of the decks overlooking the Lido, this one is more inside than outside, although there are outside areas where you can look over at the Lido um, and the pool area itself. Over here, you can see that there are little sitting areas. Some are a bit more interior, some are near the exterior windows, and some overlook the Lido. But there are these comfortable uh, chairs and couches where one could come, read a book, perhaps be on the internet, uh, chat with someone. Here is the closest thing there is to a library. It's a lending kind of sharing library where you can leave books and games um, for other um, passengers that will be coming on the ship after you. As you can see, this was the maiden voyage. It wasn't very filled in yet. Beautiful seats over there with views of the ocean, looking across um, to the Lido itself. But look, just lovely. If you want an ocean view while you're relaxing, this is a great place for that. Then walking over to this side, you can see there's um, a little out exterior area with a bit of a balcony. So you can watch the movie from up here um, for the dive-in movies or just watch the goings on at the Lido, the contests, um, what, what's going on, the, the scene down on the Lido deck. Here you can see that they did add um, another two rows of chairs um, during the daytime um, in front of the pool. Now we are going back in Still going around this deck 11 with all its little seating areas. Now here you're seeing people playing cards and games on some of the tables by this, which is the pergola bar. As you can see, cafe tables, great places, to pick up a card game, do a puzzle, sit and talk with a drink. Again, some out exterior area here where you can look at the pool or across. Coming back around, you can see um, the actual pergola bar has your standard drinks menu for any carnival pool type bar uh, up here as well. You've got lots of cafe tables and places to sit. By the way, the little lights up there in this pergola really look beautiful when you're down doing one of the deck parties at night. It looks like little stars tw twinkling. Very, very nice. All right, and now you are coming around kind of uh, the part of the pool where you can get the elevators. I think these are, I think, midship elevators. And then on this side of 11, there's like a games area. So you've got ping pong, some uh, foosball tables, bocce court, which I think is wonderful. They have bocce tournaments. I'm a big fan of bocce. My uh, grandparents and parents used to play it in the summer. If you're not familiar with it, um, it's like lawn bowling. It's a really fun game. Some more games. I don't know what this pig game is over here to the right. And then more tables. You can see someone's doing a, a bit of work on their computer here. Just 
again, more nooks and crannies. Just really nice to have these, these areas where you don't have to be right in the thick of things, the lovely view, or just a little spot to get away. Can be loud up here if there's a big party or something going on on the Lido deck, just to be aware of it. The windows open over there overlooking the ocean, which lends a nice breeze. It got a little stuffy up here one of the days, but generally speaking, it was very cool and very nice. Okay, and that takes you right around um, to, this is the Java Blue Cafe stairs to where we started. And over here, again, you are um, approaching the stairs where we came up. Another one of the many pieces of artwork. Here, we are going back out um, to where those midship elevators were, and I'm gonna show you the exterior portion of Deck 11. There are lots of places that you can sit and um, get a lounge chair overlooking the ocean and sun yourself without being on the Lido. I always like these little places to be alone and I like to read, maybe have a drink, and I don't wanna be in the thick of things always. And there are lots of opportunities for that on the Venezia. Over here to the left is a little outdoor portion of um, Camp Ocean for the children. Shielded, which is very nice. Here we have more of the deck chairs. I guess, I'm not sure why there's like a white shield there, but it's a nice, very private little area. Okay, and more. Lots and lots of deck chairs up here. So don't forget this area. When you can get a deck chair and you don't necessarily need to be by the pool, this is just great. To the left here, you have the pickleball court, also for basketball, so your outdoor sports area. And this, these deck chairs have beautiful views of the ocean. More windscreens. And this area over here with some of the umbrellas set up is overlooking the Burano pool area. There are steps to go up there. We'll take those shortly. Now over here, you are in the back of the ship by the Burano pool area. Lots of nice places here with umbrellas for some shade. Great area to catch the sun. You pretty much can just go down one level if you want to go in the pool in the Brano sun deck. You can see some of the umbrellas here and in the back there are even some clamshells. Great place if you want to be in the shade, yet also want to be outdoors. Coming around here, I believe this is the smoking area on deck 11. And then coming back around this way is pretty much a repeat of the other side of 11 on the outside area. So you'll see again the other side of the sports court and lots and lots of loungers to take the sun. I love these ones where they don't have the tall wind screens and you can really enjoy the ocean. This is a repeat of the other area on the other side with the white screen. Probably very nice on a windier day. Lots of great exterior parts of this ship and I do appreciate that. 
Lots of exterior space also on deck five. Okay, and so here we are, and we have made pretty much a circle. Those doors right there will lead us back to the games area on deck 11 of some outdoor uh, restrooms for you here, including a one for the disabled. And we're back. All right, now we are going to head up to 12, where you'll find a lot of the uh, Fun Zone family things. As you can see, we've come around, and now we're gonna go up those stairs. Um, over on the side there, you can see where we're heading, which is the Splash Zone. Also known on the ship as the Carnival Waterworks. Okay, so there are those stairs that we saw by the Brano pool um, at back of the ship. Let's head up there now. And the first thing you see is the walking track on 12. I believe that four goes on the walking track equals one mile, so it's a quarter of a mile each round on the track. You can see they've got some machines up here, outdoor machines, in addition to the, um, in addition to the fitness area. There are these outdoor machines, a couple on this side as well as the other side. We're looking now 10 and 11 in the Burano sun deck area. Just really pretty views off the back of the ship here. There's a really nice walking track, unlike on the Mardi Gras and the XL ships where it's kind of thin and goes directly through a lot of fun areas. This one's a little bit more on the side and uh, was very nice for walking in the morning. There's the other side, um, as I mentioned, of the outdoor fitness equipment. Just a very nice walking track. Enjoyed it on this transatlantic journey. And we are walking. Okay, coming around now, we will see the ropes course coming up straight ahead. Looking down on some of those deck chairs where we just were on 11. Now, before we get over to the splash zone and the ropes course over here to the left, is a small miniature golf course. It is not as complete or I think as fun as the ones on the XL ships, for instance. I love the one on the Mardi Gras. But you do have some holes here and they ran some like hole-in-one tournaments and other events up in the area of the miniature golf, which is surrounded by the ropes course. Very nice long ropes course. I did not take it. I'm a little bit of a klutz, as you might know. Over here you have the arcade and we're gonna take a peek in there it's a, about it's late afternoon so not very crowded in there right now so let's go see what machines they've got nice variety both games to play and games for tickets of it. As you can see, that one is more of a ticket, collecting tickets type thing. So there's luck games as well as a couple of skill games. And if you 
win something up here with the tickets. There's not a kiosk, but there's like a machine where you can redeem your tickets, the prize hub, they call it, right over here. And so it's all done. You, you put your tickets in, they tell you how many you have, and then you can select your prize based on the amount of tickets that you have collected. And everything from little prizes all the way up to large ones. The two largest prizes are already gone, it looks like. So uh, some kids had a very good time up here. All right, and that's it for the arcade. On the other side of the arcade, looking at the Costa smokestack. And now we're gonna go ahead over to that splash zone. Additional loungers up here on 12. Really can't look down on the Lido up here, but beautiful views of the ocean again. Of course, you will have people walking on the walking track, especially in the morning. And here's your splash zone. I really needed my grandchildren on this walking tour to tell you how good of a splash zone this is. I am not uh, one to uh, take the water slides, but I'll show them to you. Beautiful view of the, that side of the ship and the Lido from all the way up here. It's a bit enclosed over on this side and it opens up on the side we're coming around to. Continuing around looking at various slides. I guess these are great if you're watching your kids in the splash zone. These lounge chairs would be uh, well-placed for that. Here's where it opens up. Okay, I'll look at the different slides. On our cruise, this wasn't very busy, but we only had 250 children for the transatlantic. I assume that this area will be quite busy for some of the Caribbean destinations. I'm gonna head inside right now to show you that you get access to this area right here, which are the midship elevators. There's Cloud9 Spa. We are not going to take you in there or into the fitness center, which is also on this level for uh, privacy reasons. We are still on 12 here. You get a view um, outside from the inside of the Carnival Waterworks. And those uh, stairs you see right over there through these doors will take you up so that you can get to the entrances to the three water slides. And here are the four aforementioned midship elevators that take you straight up to this level. Very easy access. Okay, here are another view of the wonderful slides. Three slides in total. Great views of the ship too. And here you need to be 41 inches to take slides. This is the yellow slide, and then there are separate entrances above for the blue slide and the yellow and blue slide, which are a little bit um, higher. And that's it. That's a view of the Carnival Waterworks and the water slides and the fun splash zone.
just one second there. There are the two entrances for the two taller slides. Okay, that's a wrap on my walking tours on the Carnival Venezia. I hope you've enjoyed this. This was my longest of the tours. I've broken it up into chapters for you so you can go back and see exactly what you'd like to see. There are five other installments of this walking tour series, all taken on the very first voyage. Um, so make sure you check those out. I have an entire uh, playlist for those walking tours. So you'll see everything from the Terrazzo Cabanas. We'll have deck five. I've got the Lido deck, Serenity, Deck. I've got everything that you're going to want to know if you're going to be taking a trip on the Carnival of Venezia or if you're thinking of booking a cruise on the Carnival of Venezia. So if you haven't yet, please subscribe to my channel. I appreciate my viewers very much. Also give a like to this video, would really appreciate it. Also want to let you know what we've got coming up. I brought back so much content, everything from shorts on the ports that we've been to as well as some longer content on some of the European um, ports such as Barcelona that many of you might be traveling to this summer. I have a full review of the Carnival of Venezia. I've got reviews and um, rundowns on all of the food, both free and the paid restaurants. I've got a ton of information on entertainment, on the bars, on, on just what this ship is like. So um, make sure you stay tuned. You'll want to subscribe to make sure you don't miss that content. So thank you for joining me. You've been Cruising with Dee.